Hello Internet, welcome back to our Cataclysm tutorial series. Ah, it's been a while since I played. I notice we're in distressing pain. We are tired and we're quite injured, particularly on our arms. I believe, did we switch to a vest of some sort? Yeah, I, I hate these vests so much. They're so overpowered. Um, and we've talked about that at length at this point in my various series. I don't think this should have been added to the game. But again, if this is a tutorial Let's Play, Obviously, I would encourage you, you know, to wear something that has 50 and 90 cut. And just by comparison, the motorcycle pants, which are Kevlar, have 5 and 8 cut. So it's more than 10 times more protection than what we have on our legs. So it's hard for me to justify not wearing it out of a sense of pride or whatever. Because obviously, if, if you're a new player, I would encourage you to wear this vest. So we're wearing the vest, which means we have no arm protection. So our arms really took quite a beating. Um, in our last couple episodes. In fact, I think I remember getting pretty frustrated with just things in general. I've been going through a lot lately. If you haven't been watching the channel uh, real often, I did put out a video explaining that I'm going to be kind of backing off on my YouTube schedule a little bit and uh, talked about some of the things I've been going through. Anyway, so we're obviously quite injured. We don't want to go back outside right now. I don't know if we ever talked about this. Uh, if your head or torso gets fully reduced, you will die. If your arms get fully reduced, they will be broken. And we really don't want broken arms. It takes like a week or more, uh, probably several weeks to recover from a broken arm. So we really, we don't, we don't want that to possibly happen at all. So let's check our first aid skill. We're at one. Do we have any other first aid books? First aid to three. I think what we'll do is... Man, our focus is 23. We're not really going to be able to level up our our skills because of how bad our focus is. If we look at the focus menu, we'll see that it's primarily our pain. You see we have a negative 47. So at best, we're going to trend towards 55. And it would be hard to cancel that out, eating food and, and whatnot. We could do it, but that would be us devoting quite a few hours to trying to recover and, and learn that skill. So... Even though raising our first aid would increase the amount that we heal overnight once we apply medications and things to our wounds, the time investment isn't really worth it. It would be better to just do it now, go to sleep, recover some HP, and then in the following days, read the first aid book when we have better focus, level that skill up. Then in the next couple days when we go to sleep, we'll recover that much more HP. So for now, I think we would just apply some disinfectant or rather antiseptic I keep forgetting they changed the name of it to our arm because that's very damaged and we'll apply a proper bandage rather than a makeshift bandage because it's just a tiny it's about 25% more effective so we'll apply that here as well you'll see the quality that we got uh, are actually average whereas previously when we applied things we were getting very poor and poor the reason for this is one, the actual bandages have a higher quality than the makeshift bandages we've been using. And then the other factor here is that we have a higher first aid skill. Now it's only one, but that can be the difference between uh, getting a poor quality treatment and a decent quality treatment, average quality treatment. So we've taken care of that particular limb. Why don't we go ahead and make some more, do we have makeshift bandages? Makeshift, we, we have one. Um, yeah, I mean, we only need the one, really. Let's just apply the makeshift bandage to our other arm, which is the other most damaged body part. Uh, we're going to spend the next few days not putting ourselves in danger, so we don't need to worry about, like, our torso. This is going to recover over the next... You know what? We'll make some bandages. Just make the bandages. Uh, because what I don't want to happen is we, you know, end up not treating our wounds very thoroughly today. And then we, you know, over the next couple days, maybe we run out of stuff to do and we kind of want to go out, but our health is still in such a predicament that we don't feel comfortable going out. So we would rather just, uh, just do it. Might as well do it. There's no reason not to do it. It takes only a few minutes of our time um, and we can, you know, recover that much more quickly. So we'll fill up our water jug here, dump this again, drop this here. We also don't need to carry antiseptic on us. We're not going to waste antiseptic by applying it to our, our minor wounds. And we will make some makeshift bandages. Uh, makeshift bandages. We'll make six of them. Again, the um, boiling of them only works in multiples of three. So we might as well make a, a couple of uh, stacks here. And then we'll make uh, the boiled makeshift bandage. 
you'll see here it makes three, so it can only be done in quantities of three. So we'll go ahead and make those, and we will apply the makeshift bandages to our other body parts. Uh, you don't expect any improvement. Oh, we already bandaged that one. I mean, we have the bandages, we might as well use them. I think this continues to level up our first aid, uh, albeit very slowly. And you can see that the quality here is poor compared to the average we got from the proper bandages. So taking care of our medical needs, we are in a lot of pain, but again, sleeping is gonna take care of that. So we really don't need to eat uh, any medication. However, I don't like the idea of my character laying in bed in pain. I believe that pain should interfere with your ability to sleep. So uh, we're gonna take some aspirin because obviously I like in, in my own personal life, I've had really bad toothaches my whole life. My teeth basically rotted out of my head when I was a teenager um, and uh, like my wisdom teeth specifically and it caused me great deals of pain. And it would interrupt my sleep. I would wake up multiple times a night and just take fistfuls of ibuprofen because there was nothing to do about it. Um, which uh, by the way, don't do that. That's really bad for your stomach lining and I think contributed to why I have so many stomach problems. My doggo is barking. There have been people on the street because when oh. you lock down society, people decide, no, I'm going to go outside anyway. Um, so we're going to go to bed here. And if she keeps barking, I'll go tend to her. We are warm. Are we so warm that we're not going to be able to sleep? You'll see it's cooler in the basement. All of our uh, body parts are at negatives now. This is because it's cooler underground. If we go upstairs and we just get away from the fire even, and we look, you'll see we're mostly in the positives. It's just warmer. Uh, I don't know if sunlight contributes to that, if it's just a, a, a level thing, but it's cooler in basements. So, uh, And we don't need to worry about the cold because we do have some sheets that will keep us warm while we sleep. So we'll go ahead. Oops, what? Uh, no, actually, yes, don't sleep. Let's put on our headgear. Headgear. Because uh, that thing's still going to be making noise while we try to sleep, uh, until basically until it runs out of ammunition. I don't know if the robots ever do. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. Riot bots will eventually run out of ammunition. Sure you want to sleep? Why am I not getting a message about setting an alarm? Did we lose our wristwatch? No. Hmm. Maybe I had a cell phone in my inventory previously. That's why we were getting that message. Doesn't really matter. Let's go to bed. Nope. Stop saying no. Go to bed. Yes. Um, is there anything else we need to do before we go to sleep? We're not really that hungry. We're not thirsty. We're tired. We're not hot. Um, we treated all of our wounds. Yep. Go to sleep. Oh, there's the alarm. No, don't set the alarm. So I don't particularly have anything in this episode that I want to deal with specifically. So I think what we're going to do, and you know, this is becoming a theme. If you're watching the tutorial series, you have seen that I've made some episodes where I specifically target certain topics. So we have something to talk about. Top picks. I said topics, which is not, not a thing. Um, you know, I, I'll target like, oh, in this episode, we're going to talk about welding or this episode, let's get our forge set up. I don't, I don't have anything like that for today, really at all. Um, we've progressed through most of the basics. If you've watched the entirety of the series, I would say at this point, you're adequately prepared to play the game. There's always nuance. There's always little stuff um, that will pop up that we'll talk about as we come to them. Like when we bumped into the Necromancer, we took a moment to discuss why they are potentially very dangerous, although ours was not. It was very quickly dealt with. Um, and as the game progresses, we will continually talk about the monster evolutions because I think that uh, in Cataclysm, for me, when I first started out, learning the different monsters was a really important step towards me getting better at the game. So we will talk about monsters as we see them, of course. Um, but there's not a lot left. We, we, the main things that we would like to talk about, I would like to show you exploring labs and how to do that properly. I would like to talk about uh, Mutagen. Uh, the bionics in the game, but those are all end game systems. We're probably not going to get to a lab in the next week or two. I mean, maybe in the next week, uh, because we do have some locations that we've targeted that could very well hold labs like this, uh, or this, or this, or this over here. So there are quite a few opportunities nearby. However, there were some changes to map gen a little while ago, a couple, I mean, at this point, probably six months ago. Um, but many of these could just be farms now. It used to be if you found a spoke like this, you were basically guaranteed to find a lab. Now you can find military compounds a lot more commonly. Um, mostly they're farms. So we will take a look at that once we get a vehicle together 
uh, and can travel a little bit more readily. I'd love to put together a motorcycle, actually, because uh, we can get through the woods on a motorcycle. You can't really on a car. And there's nowhere that connects. We could check this one just by driving the roads, but these are not connected to our current town. We would have to go all the way up, go through another town, and come back down, which is not ideal. In fact, you know what? We could just hoof it to these, to be honest. But we're not going to be doing that. Um, not, not yet, anyway. Uh, we haven't even made a pickaxe yet, which is an important tool, uh, which we have the ability to make, I would assume, in our book somewhere is a pick. Really, we don't have a pick. Actually, it probably just requires a higher fabrication than we have. Ooh, Fab Six, we should probably be able to make a pickaxe. We must not have the recipe. Um, we do need to source more books. If we look at our book menu, you'll see, you might look at this and say, man, that's a lot of books. It is, it is, I guess, um, but really there are so many books that we still don't have. And there are specific locations that you can target to find more books. We just haven't seen any. And we definitely, definitely want to find more books. That is something that until you really have all the books, there's always something more to look for in that regard. You'll see overnight we covered... Did we actually lose HP? I thought our... Wait a minute. I thought we had... Our torso was only half... I'm, I may be misremembering. I don't think we lost HP. Maybe I'm just crazy. Uh, I don't know what would have caused me to... Okay, I'm sure it's fine. Uh, we'll reassess next time we sleep to make sure we're not dying in our sleep or something. Um, I don't see why we would have lost HP, and I'm probably just misremembering. Uh, but you'll see we regained some HP on our arm, not nearly as much as we would have liked, of course. Uh, again, this is due to a low first aid skill. Once you get up to first aid, like three, four, five, you really start noticing significant improvements overnight. By the time I get to first aid six, which is usually the max that I get it up to, because uh, there's really not a lot of reason to raise it beyond that. I you, you heal a lot overnight. It's a pretty significant increase going from skill level 0 to skill level 5 or whatever. So we definitely want to do that. In fact, it's dark. Uh, my goal for this episode was to go put new tires on our vehicle, which is what we set out to do in a previous episode, and then we failed to actually do because I'm bad at life and I'm easily distracted. Why am I carrying tack gloves? Are we not wearing gloves? Uh, take off wearing leather gloves. Why am I why am I wearing carrying tack gloves? They do have better protection. What's the encumbrance on the leather gloves? Leather gloves five. Yeah, if we could get these tack gloves to fit we would be able to Wear them because they're better than the leather gloves, uh, but the encumbrance is not something I really want to deal with We can see if we have the skills. What's our tailoring three? We definitely do not have the skills to resize these at the moment um, it's one of the things about Cataclysm also that annoys me is that refitting clothing actually requires a pretty hefty skill. Uh, so if we start the fire here, start a fire, and we grab our sewing kit uh, here. If we activate the sewing kit and we select the tack gloves, I believe, so I haven't done this in a while because mostly it doesn't matter and it doesn't come up that often. Mostly I just can find things that fit me. Um, I believe what happens is if you try to repair or do anything with a clothing item that does not fit, it will say, where, where does it say? Here it says practicing. It would say refitting, right? And then you would have a, a chance of refitting it. I don't often see that, um, and I'm not even sure if that is how you determine if something is refittable. I think that that's not a very good system. I think there should be a separate option that says, hey, refit this clothing. I'm not sure why it's set up to just be in the repair menu like that. Um, maybe that has changed and I'm incorrect, but I believe it would say refitting um, and it would function anytime you try to re redo anything with those clothes. We have these hot dogs. Why don't we make, how's our weight doing? We are overweight again. That is okay. I'm going to make some hot dogs. We will look for cooked hot dog, and we have all the materials. The bread is going bad. This is why I want to I wanna do this. Um, how many portions? Two, and with the regular bread, I don't think sauerkraut would probably contribute calories, but mostly it's the bread. If we were using cornbread, it would have a higher calorie count than if we use regular bread. 
I think using regular bread, we're going to end up right around like 280 calories would be my guess. Didn't we do this in a previous episode and it was more than I thought it was? We'll make four portions and we'll use the ketchup because it goes bad. And we'll use the water for boiling the hot dogs. Watch as you craft. Okay, Lyle Darden, you're doing a great job. We still have not been taking... 230, okay, so it was less than my estimate. Still, we'll eat all four of these hot dogs. We are now sated. We are still slaked from the night prior, I believe. You'll see the bread is going bad. The bird eggs are going bad. We should have like 70 rotten bird eggs in this list somewhere. In fact, let's pick up our rotten stuff and get it out of here. Yep, 73 rotten, rotten bird eggs. So we'll pick all this up. And just to get it out of our base and we've been dumping things here now in cataclysm bird eggs will hatch ignore um, but in order to hatch they first rot it's just the way that it's set up in in cataclysm so there's a chance that these could uh, turn into chicks I'm not sure if there's a difference between bird eggs and fridges versus bird eggs that are laid by actual animals so it's possible these may not hatch or it's possible we might come back to the base one day and find 80 little chicks running around so we'll see we'll see our speed is dropping that's because we're very warm so let's look at our body parts probably our legs and head let's take off our motorcycle pants actually we should walk by the fire and check these are all within tolerable numbers uh, and we're going to work to raise our first aid i want to put tires on the vehicle uh, it's 2 a.m. We can't do vehicle work at night, so we will just raise our first aid skill because that's something we discussed previously. Before we do that, go ahead and have a sip of beer for a little bit of bonus mood. Pinot Noir, I love wine. Take some Pinot Noir uh, and, and then give me the MP3 player just for an ongoing boost. Activate MP3 player and we'll come over here and we'll read. We are gonna end up inhaling smoke at some point, but we'll just read this. Our focus is probably gonna trend to about 80, uh, but I, I mean, I didn't bother to check that. Looks like we're holding steady around 87, which is fine. We just wanna raise our first aid skill as much as we can, and then once uh, daylight breaks, we will go out and finally put wheels on that. Um, what, what did I even, we were looking for diesel. That's why we bumped off. Oh, that's right, because we found a, baseball diamond just packed with enemies and that really irritates me when I find locations like that so I ended up complaining a lot and clearing out a big old horde and not enjoying myself um, it is summertime oh mp3 player we don't want to go out deaf we want to be able to hear what is around us stamina is dropping why did we get some still dropping um, okay why is my stamina dropping? We may have inhaled some smoke. You cough heavily, yeah, that's probably why. Um, so go ahead and what do we have in our inventory? Motorcycle pants. We really need to get to wearing more summer clothes. If we step outside, it's morning, so it's not super hot, but if you look, in fact, we're pretty comfortable right now. As the day goes on, we'll get warmer and warmer. We had gone off in search of diesel. We found. That was extremely loud and actually startled me in real life. So from the south and below, we hear kaboom. That is a, um, a gunshot from the robot. Um, I edit my sound way down, so I don't know if you'd even hear it. Uh, but that would be the underground of the prison, I guess. So there's literally something right underneath our feet that's shooting. It doesn't really matter. Uh, we're going to need... What am I doing? We're going to need a jack to work on tires jack we did make a nice jack this is the yes very powerful jack what um actually was that the right jack i think it was scissor jack yeah it's, this is better um we're not going to need anything else but we'll take our typical suite of tools just to ensure that we have anything we might need uh screwdriver would be the other thing the other tool i generally take with me Go ahead and grab a screwdriver. We have six of them. Oh no, what if I, you know, what if I need seven? Okay. And um, tires are not a big deal. We talked about why this Humvee needs some work. Uh, not seeing any enemies, which is peculiar because there were quite a lot by the railway station. But we'll head up here. 
And we'll take a look at the Humvee again, just to reassess. It's been a while since I played. What do you got going on? We did fill the tank quite a bit. Um, 8.6 liters is a lot. Uh, it's not really... As the game progresses uh, and you drive around more and more, you'll very quickly fill your gas tanks. It's not that big of a deal. Diesel is harder to find than gasoline, so I would prefer... Honestly, if this was a, a gas engine, and we talked about that, we would have to take out the engine and find a comparable gasoline engine, because this one is going to be relatively powerful in order to move the immense weight of the Humvee. So if we went back to base and harvested our little little dinky car that's like two tiles by two tiles, that's not really going to have an engine that can move this, this big old honkin' Humvee. So we would have to find something of comparable power, that's a gasoline engine. Now those things exist. We've seen some big trucks that were gasoline engines, but mostly, you know, the more power, the, the basically the beefier your vehicle, the more likely you should grab diesel. And then the other aspect worth noting is that you can create biodiesel once you get kind of far into the game. And, and you can make your own fuel for diesel engines uh, using biodiesel, whereas you don't have that opportunity with gasoline. So. It's one reason why people lean towards diesel. I just, I don't care about that. I usually don't play that late into the game to where I need to manufacture my own fuel. I get really bored with Cataclysm. Honestly, right after I get a vehicle up and running, I usually start losing interest in Cataclysm. I've heard a lot of people say that, you know, boredom is the number one killer of end game characters, mid game characters, because people just don't want to play anymore. So, yeah. Uh, you can we can source diesel. It's just not as easy as gasoline. Uh, and then we need we need tires. Is the only thing that's really preventing this from being our vehicle. So if we take a look at our tires, we find the tile that the tires are on. You'll see they're all 32 inch armored wheels. Now I don't know the exact math behind things. I know the better like these wider wheels. I think give better off road traction or something. I, I don't know. It never comes up. I usually just use whatever tires. I make them all whatever the standard tire size is. So those are 32 inch armored wheels. If we come over and look at a regular vehicle, these are 16 inch racing slick. What is that? Racing slick, a wheel. If the center balanced, yeah, that's it's just a wheel. That's weird. I've never seen that tire before. Uh, let's look at a more normal vehicle, I guess. That's weird. Maybe, is this like a sports car? It is a sports car. Okay, so if we look at the cube van, we see what... Yeah, 24-inch wide wheels are usually what I end up putting on my vehicle. They're like the most common. 24-inch wheels are, are the most common. So like if we come over here, 24-inch wide wheel. If we go over to this pickup over here, uh, or 4x4, my mistake, 24-inch off-road wide wheel. So there are different wheels in the game that have different impacts depending on the surface you're driving on. It's not super relevant. Um, there was supposed to be, geez, like a year ago, there was a lot of talk about uh, changes to off-roading and driving off-road. I haven't noticed that, but I don't really drive off-road. So maybe there were sweeping changes and I just don't know it. Um, but it, really it's irrelevant for the purposes of this discussion because all we want are some wheels so that we can drive the dang thing. So really, we just need to find a vehicle that has wheels on it. Uh, if this has four wheels on it, we'll just take the off-road wheels. Yeah, that sounds fine. So this has four functional wheels on it. Um, so we're just going to steal... Oh my god, I left the wrench. You idiot. You do need a wrench uh, or pliers. Actually, do, can pliers, do pliers have a high enough... We'll check that. I don't know if pliers have a high enough bolt turning to remove a tire. Because I don't think in real life I could remove... I certainly could not remove my lug nuts in real life with uh, a pliers. I would definitely need a proper wrench. Nope, don't need two, just one. Uh, obviously lug nuts on a vehicle. So if you're... I don't think I learned to change a tire until I was in my 20s. If you're unfamiliar, um, a tire... Man, I can't imagine you would be unfamiliar. I mean, maybe you are. Maybe you're someone who like me would prefer to pay someone to do this kind of work instead of doing it themselves. Um, but most tires are fastened to the wheel hub, uh, the, the hub underneath. We've talked about the, the hubs a little bit. Um, you know, it's basically 
right, so underneath your tire, it's basically a disc. We're just gonna remove these. I, actually, I'm gonna test that the pliers work. So let's drop our wrench over here out of range and try with pliers and see if we can remove these with pliers. It would be really silly to me if you could. Yeah, no, they don't have the appropriate bolt turning. You need bolt turning too, which is on the wrench, of course. Um, so yeah, if you've never seen a wheel off of a vehicle, it's basically a wheel is secured to, underneath it's kind of like a, a disc, a metal disc with uh, spokes on it. And depending on your vehicle, you will have different numbers of lugs uh, or of the um, uh, of spokes essentially. And that's what your lug nuts fasten onto and fasten the wheel to your, to your vehicle. So we very quickly removed these wheels. Uh, you'll see only about an hour and a half. I think it was around 5 a.m. when we set out. So about an hour and a half to remove all these wheels. We have uh, four of them. One is in perfect condition. That's why they're in separate piles here. And we'll just use the hauling command to drag these over to our Humvee. Again, these are not as wide as the Humvee wheels, but it doesn't really matter. Um, we don't need to source 32 inch wheels to make this work. I'm going to work from the other side of the vehicle. That way, when we go to install, um, we don't have to worry about the, actually, because they're different sizes, it doesn't matter. But some parts, let's say we were putting a car battery in and we dragged a car battery over and then we removed the car battery from this one uh, and they were nearby each other. Um, we risk putting the old one back in by mistake because there's no way to select which of the things you want to install unless that has changed recently. Um, so we, we w would like to keep our vehicle parts on separate sides of the vehicle. That way we're not they're not in line of sight when we go to work on it. So we'll just tug off the old wheels here um, yep. Yeah. Uh, it used to be when you would install wheels, you would have to select if they were steerable or not. Um, I think I recommended in our vehicle video that you always make the front wheels steerable. So here we have, you'll see because they were so damaged, we didn't even get tires. All we got were chunks of metal because, um, when a vehicle part is damaged to the point of being destroyed, you don't actually harvest the part. You'll just harvest the scraps of the part. So come back here and start installing the wheels. Um, in general, you want the wheels on the front and rear. If you want to install a second set, I would encourage you to make two sets in the rear and one set up front. Um, because we're installing this not from scratch, if we were doing this from scratch, we would have to install wheel assemblies as well, hubs as well. But because this was a vehicle that previously had wheels on it, we're just going to install wherever the wheel hubs are. Um, and in this vehicle, there's only four points that we would install wheels and the benefit of adding additional wheels is just in case you get one that's so damaged it can't function anymore you have other wheels to take up that that burden or whatever uh, so if we go to the hub assembly and we install uh, we don't have the ability to install a wheel why is that hmm armored wheel wheels Mechanics six for extra steering axles. I'm not installing uh, a new axle. What is the problem here? It has to be an armored wheel. Ah, okay, I see. Heavy wheel assembly, I see, okay. My mistake, internet, this does in fact require those larger wheels and that is because it has a heavy assembly so if we go to remove this and we look at it connection where wheels can be connected on this particular one is fit for large car wheels so this will not accommodate a regular sized vehicle's wheels so we're actually going to have to take off the hub assemblies as well and install regular hub assemblies if we want to use these wheels alternatively we have to look around until we can find a uh, a vehicle that has the 32 inch wheels uh, because if we go to install a wheel you'll see it specifically requests a uh, armored wheel, which uh, is a 32 inch wheel. So that's really unfortunate. I haven't done this since they changed the hub assembly thing. Um, so it looks like we're gonna have to take off the hub assemblies. What does it take to install a hub assembly? Hub. A regular wheel hub assembly require, does require the welder. So thank goodness we made a welder. And it requires a medium wheel hub assembly. So you can't make it from scratch. We would have to pull one off of another vehicle. 
That's not a very big deal. It is irritating, but we will go ahead and do that. Probably in the next episode, because we're at 30 minutes. How long does it take to remove one? Hub assembly, we might need... Oh, we did bring the hacksaw with us. It does require a hacksaw. It takes 15 minutes. We will quickly pull these off, uh, and then we will install them in the next episode. So sorry for the slight misinformation, Internet. It's been a while since I've done true vehicle work, uh, especially since the hubs have been implemented. But on the plus side, medium hubs are like on every single vehicle. Uh, the one that we saw that had um, smaller, the, the sports car, I'm curious what hub assembly does the sports car have on it? Is there a small hub assembly? It does not look like it. it. looks like a regular, yep, same, same normal hub assembly. Um, and then, of course, I don't know if we ever mentioned this. Obviously, a uh, bicycle does not have a hub. Uh, because it's just mounted right to the, like, it's it's not the same as a vehicle. There's no big, uh, I mean, can we even, yeah, if you kind of look at it, it's just a metal dick, uh, <laughs> metal disc. It does kind of look like uh, a penis here. Um, metal disc, disc, um, which uh, you, you mount to the, it, do, it doesn't matter. None of this matters, internet, don't. Don't judge me. Uh, let's let's call the episode here. Uh, we need to go back and get the welder anyway, but we'll work on getting this vehicle up and running today. Uh, so in the next episode, we'll do that. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, oh, and the thing I was gonna say is that uh, when you install a hub, it's going to ask you, do you wanna install a steerable hub or a non-steerable hub? So when you install in the front of your vehicle, make sure you use the steerable hubs in the front and then all other wheels just make them non-steerable. That way you have a, a front wheel, just like, I mean, obviously in real life. Okay, so mostly, at least in my vehicle, the front wheels are the wheels that turn. Obviously that's not true on every single vehicle in the world, but that is, is how Cataclysm is laid out and that's how I would encourage you to, I mean, I guess, isn't it? It is on every vehicle in the front wheel. I don't know, internet, I'm not a car guy. I don't know Jack, okay? And my ignorance often shows. So for now, that's going to do it. Thanks for watching. I'll be back with more in the near future. See you next time.